Happy. Yeah. Merv, congratulations, mate. Thank you. Um, a good reward for hard work over the couple of years, mate. How, uh, how easy was it to sign on? Um, well, isn't that hard just to go like that? But right now, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, Wayne Phillips writing your material? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm funnier than him. No, yeah. Um, no, it was good. I thought prior to my injury, it was probably the most consistent footy I've been playing. Can you guys give me one sec? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that was all the best start. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez, I was killing it too. I was on fire. You were smooth. You were smooth. Channel 9 will be spewing. <laughs> I haven't got the joke. I'm not asking again. <laughs> Can't Sorry, nice. Um, I thought this year was probably the most consistent footy I've been playing uh, for the couple of months before my injury. So um, to be able to obviously get the trust in, in the footy club to stay on for a couple of years, um, it was really nice and it was a no-brainer. I love the footy club. I love the people involved within the footy club. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wrapped to be able to stay for another couple. What was it about that period, mate, that's, that's elevated your game and you're more consistent now? Um, well, I think... A little bit more maturity. Like I've played obviously the 50 games now. Um, looking around the forward line when when Lynch is not there through injury, um, for a period of time there was me and Tex had the only two over 50 games. Um, and I still feel like obviously being a 22 year old, I'm still finding my feet in the game. But it comes a time where you've sort of just got to understand that you know I, I can't have those bad games anymore. And um, obviously playing enough footy at that level, I, I felt like my consistency. Um, obviously, my training standards are something I pride myself on, but just feeling a bit more comfortable at the level. Um, and it, it was nice to be able to you know, put a, a good patch of footy in. Um, and obviously, we'll three at one at one point, so uh, the team was going well. And um, yeah, as I said, it was just good to get some reward for my hard work. It's a pretty amazing story. Like you've done it the hard way. You've, you've spoken about it before in the way that you've made your way onto an AFL list and succeeding. Now, does it ever make you? sort of look back and, and appreciate exactly how far you've come compared to say someone that's taken in pick one, two, three? Yeah, oh, it's funny you say that. I did speak to mum and dad uh, over the last couple of days when I did sign. And, um, it, it is easy to get lost sort of in the in the story, but look, to be honest, I'm, I had a great family growing up. I played, I went to a great high school, played TAC Cup. I missed out in the draft. I, the only cool thing about the story is I worked at the shop. Like, still went and played Sanford footy as an 18 year old. Um, so yeah, the story looks great, but uh, you know I've moved states and all that stuff. But really, um, uh, some other guys doing it more tough than me, and I'm just glad that the footy club gave me a chance five years ago. And um, yeah, obviously I've, I've been playing well enough to, to earn their trust. So it's yeah, it's just nice. Do you have any moments along the way where you were like, oh yeah, I, I feel like an AFL footballer now, or like this is a, a team that I can perform in, or any moments like that? Um, yeah, look, the first couple of years is always hard, trying to find your feet. I think when you look at it, the, my very first game, I think the four line was you know, McGovern, Jenkins, Betts, Lynch, um, te uh, yeah, Tex, as I said. So I was sort of that sixth guy that was rolling in. It was kind of just pinch yourself. Um, and at five years down the track, I, I still get that feeling. And it, it, you just look around and see like, playing with Rowie and um, Schoenberg and, and new guys like that. It, um, there, there is that moment where you're like, oh, I, I belong here and, and, I, and I'm an AFL footy player. And it's probably something that, that it took me a fair time to sort of understand. Like, I, I sort of feel like a, a kid. I just love the game of footy. Like, um, uh, I don't really call myself a professional athlete in terms of like, oh, that's my job. I just love playing footy and it's a great sport. And I'm just, it's like a privilege that I can do it full time, to be honest. And what about you, you injury-wise, how far off do you think you are? Yeah, I, I th five to six weeks it would be the like the normal schedule. I um, I was out there running for the first time yesterday, which was a good stepping stone. So if I can chip a couple of weeks off that, that'll be handy. But um, but we'll take it slow. I don't want to make it worse, getting you know being a bit of a hero and getting back early. But um, at the moment, everything's going as well as possible, and uh, I'll just keep heading in that direction. So very keen to get back, obviously, and play this season still. Yeah, I'm pretty keen to get out of the rehab. So uh, I love Tiles and that, but he's not very funny and he'll be a bit of a wet blanket, so I'm keen to get out of there. How bad was it, mate? Obviously, a huge time on the sidelines. Was it as bad as an injury as you had? Yeah, I've been blessed, touch wood, but I haven't really been injured that often. So when I first did it, I honestly thought I'd snap my leg. And funny, funny enough, you know those compound fractures? For some reason during the week, I was watching that on YouTube. And when I landed, I thought, oh, here we go. Of course, this has happened, but and I looked down and saw my ankle was still intact. But then it sort of hit me within a split second that I've 
done some sort of damage. Um, Try to walk off, just couldn't couldn't put weight through. I think the doc and physios knew straight away. Once I couldn't put weight on, it was probably a syndesmosis. Oh, I had no idea what that word was. I couldn't actually say it properly for a good couple of weeks. But um, yeah, oh, I knew it's surgery two days later and eight to ten weeks. So I got my head around that pretty quickly. Um, as I said, the rehabs at the moment, like Hingey, Wayno, Crouchy, Tails, have been up there for you know, some 12 months. So. My mindset up there has just been as positive as I can. Eight to ten weeks to them is nothing, so um, bring the energy up there. And you know, it can be a dark place to be honest. You're stuck indoors for a long time, and you know, for some people, it's you can't really see the end of the tunnel. I'm lucky that I can see that. Um, so I've just been trying to bring a positive mindset and um, get those boys through. And when you get out on the track for your first run, what does that feel like for you? I hate running, but it's the first time I've gone. I actually can't wait to run which is weird, but it was a good feeling. I, I, I was actually feeling really, really good. So um, I only did a couple of kilometres and I was blowing up, but it was, um, it was good to get out there and, and get the fresh air. And, um, and I pulled up really well from that run. So I'll have another run tomorrow um, and keep building from there. Just building up the pipes in the meantime or something? What's happening in the gym? Thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Big Bill, he's, um, he's been trying to get me on the pipe session. Uh, so I've been trying to do that. and. And I put in a lot of work and I still look like a bit of a mini fridge, so hopefully I can get something sorted out there. You talked about the blokes in the rehab group and how that can be a bit of a dour place, but a couple of the more positive relationships you have around the club, we see a lot on Instagram and the, the reveal that you had yesterday with the club. Can you talk us through your, you know, the fun and enjoyment you had with a few of those boys, lawn bowls and all that sort of gear? Yeah, so the, the No Thumb Sharks, it's on a two-year deal with them as well. That was a bit easier to work out on the GM of that joint, so <laughs> that was nice. But um, no, nah, it's good. It's a fantastic environment, fantastic club. Um, we're building something like, really, really positive. And um, as Nixie said, it's, it's a culture where people enjoy coming to work. Um, and we're building in the footy area, and you know we're, we're getting better at, in certain areas on the field. But off field, it's a it's a fantastic place to be. Um, and, and as I touched on before, rehab can be a little bit down. You have days where you sort of don't want to come in and. But just bringing that energy, bringing positivity. Um, uh, like as I said, at the moment, it's just everyone really loves coming into the, to, you know, to the workplace. If that's what you want to call it. It's a footy club. But um, yeah, the, the pranks that we're pulling, they're all harmless. But just they all get us in together. And um, yeah, and I think all that stuff will end up building up to, be, to being real positive in uh, now and in future years with the young group that we've got. One of your mates, Lockie Shoal, he not getting a game this week. How does he take news like that after, you know, a stellar 20-odd game or whatever it's been? Yeah, Locke's a fantastic player and um, I personally haven't had a chance to have a chat to him, but he, he's a very um, competitive kid and I, I know he's going to come back um, after, you know, a week off or whatever it is to, to come back and get back to AFL and play really good footy. So he's obviously a young, a young guy, quite skinny built, so, you know, it's probably a good chance for him to just rest up the body and and come back and attack the second half of the year. And on the flip side, good for Joshy Worrell to get his first game? Yeah, the big woozle. Um, no, he's going well. I, I've been lucky enough to sit in the box in the sand for the last couple of weeks, just trying to help out with the forwards there. But obviously, from there, seeing the whole team go, and Woozle's been a standout back there. He, he defends really well. Um, he, he talks a lot of crap, so his communication's not going to be an issue. But um, no, he's good. The boys love him. Um, he's easy to take the piss out of, so no, he fits in beautifully. and. Um, no, he really well deserved, and I think it's going to go really well. You keep leaving his keys out. I've seen his car parked on the other a few times this year. <laughs> yeah, Tex. As soon as you slip up once, Tex will jump onto that. He, uh, he needs to learn. Put him somewhere else. <laughs> but who does he play like? Like Brody. Put, put him on the spot there. Um, oh, uh, not really a key, but he's. I wouldn't say he's a dashing sort of like Brody Smith type. Uh, he's very good interceptor. Um, reads the ball really well. But, and does have a trusty left foot, so um, uh, he's almost like a hybrid back in a way. He, he can he can do a job on the tall, but can, uh, can he's quick enough to go to a small. Um, so he's got a lot of lot of tricks in his bag, and I'm um, just as I said, really keen to see him do his thing up there. Yeah.